Hello, parents and guardians of my students. I hope you're doing well today. I wanted to make this video for you because I wanted to talk about the number one most helpful thing that you can do at home. I really care a lot about your kids and I want to do my best to help them succeed. And the most helpful thing that you can do is to check graded work packets. And so this, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can do that and also what the procedure is for turning in missing work. I really don't want your child to feel overwhelmed if they get behind with work and then they have a pile of missing work that they need to turn in and then they don't know what to do. So you and I working together can really help them stay on track throughout the year so that they don't fall behind. So this is what happens every Friday. This is where all the graded work goes. And a parent volunteer comes in and files all of the graded work into the student folders, like this. Okay, so throughout the week, all of the student's graded work goes into these folders, and then on Fridays, every Friday, my Friday volunteer takes all of the graded work that is in this student's folder, and they staple it together with this tag on it. It says, graded work packet for 5R, fifth grade Riedel, and it has the week number on it. So when this is sent home, we know what week it came from. So every Friday, what I recommend you do is you ask your child for their graded work packet. You can ask them about the grades that they got on their work and ask them how they did and how they feel about that and, and, and whether or not they want to earn points back for any assignments that they got a low score on. I have this thing called correction forms that I do, which I'll explain in another video. So you can click here to watch that video. The other thing about the graded work packet that I told my students already is that they need to keep it in a safe place. Do not recycle it, do not throw it away, because the students really need to hold on to these for the whole rest of the trimester. Sometimes I make a gradebook error, or sometimes there's a mix up with numbers or something. And so if there's an error, then the student can show me that they actually did the work instead of having to redo the assignment. So don't recycle these, keep these in a safe place in a little drawer at home or in a box under their bed or something so that they don't lose these. This is really helpful because you can check in with them and see how they're doing with their grades, but also you can find out what they're missing. So if you look over here on the assignment wall, this I post in the classroom every week, and this is a list of all the missing assignments that the students haven't turned in. So the student can go up to this paper and they can find out what they're missing and then they can cross it off after they turn it in. Over here is where they turn in missing work. If they have any missing assignments that they want to take care of, they First, take one of these missing work slips. They write their name on it, the assignment title, and the reason that it is late. So if they were absent, I wouldn't give them a consequence for that because sometimes you can't help being sick or being absent. But they could also forget to write their name on it, or they didn't finish it, or they didn't turn it in. And that's the reason for why it's late. So I would give them a consequence for all those other reasons other than being absent. So they staple this to their assignment, put it in the missing work basket, and then they get credit for it even though it's late. It's a very common excuse for a student to say, Oh, well, I know that I turned that in. Because maybe they see something on the missing work list and they, and they say something like, Oh, Mr. Riedel, that's not missing. I know that I turned that in. I'm positive. And so usually in that case, it's just in the no-name basket and the students need to fish it out of there and then put their name on it. Because if it doesn't have their name on it, then it won't end up in the graded work packet. Something else that I'm doing, in addition to the missing work list that I'm posting in the classroom, I'm also printing out individual missing work lists for each student. So this is a missing work list that I printed out for this particular student, and it's the same information that's over there. And so this is printed out just for that student, and, and what I have the Friday volunteer do is I have them put that in this graded work packet. So what it has in it is all their graded work in addition to what's missing. So that's helpful for you guys because then you know exactly what's missing from this graded work packet, so then the student can take care of that and turn it in and, get, and not get behind. All right, so that's pretty much it. This gets stapled, like so, and then all of these graded work packets get put into the student mailboxes so that they can take them home at the end of the day. I require my students to empty their mailboxes completely at the end of the day so that I know that they have actually taken stuff out instead of them just leaving them in there. So your student always should have emptied it and where it goes from there, hopefully it goes into their binder or into their accordion folder and makes it way back to you. So that's where I could really use your help for you to ask them where their graded work packet is so that you can look over with them and talk to them about it. 
So I hope this has really been helpful. I hope you guys can uh, establish a good routine at home of asking that regularly on Fridays after school. And hopefully that will prevent a lot of students from getting overwhelmed and getting behind with their missing work. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I'd be happy to answer them. Have a great day. Talk to you guys later.